going on guys? Thanks for checking in for another Oil Food Basics video blog. My name is Derek Craig and today we're going to be talking about basically our part two video of blow up preventers. And we've already filmed one video before this on basic operations and functions of a BOP, a basic definition. And so check that out if you haven't already. I'll have a link right here in the, a little box or something on your screen where you can check it out. But in this video we're going to talk about parts and important notes about BOPs. And in the last video we're going to talk about types of BOPs. So check all of them out. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead into the parts and important notes of a BOP. And a quick mention before we begin, again, remember to check us out on our social media, follow us on all of our platforms. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And also check out our courses at oilfieldbasics.com learn. If you want to learn the basics of our industry from start to finish in a logical progressive manner with a strong focus on upstream oil and gas and unconventional plays. So check all that out. All right, so now looking into parts of a BOP. First off, we need to realize that multiple valves are going to comprise what we call a BOP stack. So all of these together is going to be collectively what we call the BOP stack or the BOPs in general. So and we're going to talk about the different types of valves in the third video. So keep an eye out for that. And also note that accumulators are going to be what provide the power necessary to actuate these valves. It's going to be found off to the side of the rig and off to the side of the BOPs. And again, that's what's going to be able to provide the power to open and close these valves. And it's also going to receive its power separate from the rig so that if the rig power goes down or something um, disastrous happens those are going to be separately powered so that you will have them to open and close these valves as, as, if necessary and of course you're going to have the hydraulic lines connecting the actuators to the actual valves themselves and also note that a lot of times these valves will have handles where you can actually open and shut them by hand if necessary although you wouldn't it's not going to be fun <laughs> Of course, another component of BOPs is that you're going to have the controllers and you're going to have controls up in the doghouse where the driller sits where they can remotely open and close these valves and also um, down around the accumulators and a couple places throughout the rigs. So you're going to have controls multiple places where you can actuate these valves. I also like to point out this flow cross here in between the BOP, a couple of the valves on the BOP stack. What that's going to allow us to do is that if we've actually shut in one of our upper rams and shut in this well because we've taken a kick, one side is going to allow us to be able to flow the well through a choke manifold, so be able to draw down the pressure at a very managed rate. And the other side is going to allow us to be able to pump into the well to kill or circulate out that kick. So that's also going to be another component of our BOP stack. I also want to point out a couple of different offshore modifications. So if you're looking at BOPs on an offshore well, it's going to be a lot larger. You're going to have more of them. They're probably going to be rated at higher pressures. And also, you're going to have different ways to actually actuate the valve. So um, in particular, you're going to have what we call like a dead man switch, or you're going to have something that if, if it loses communication with the rig at surface, that it will actually shut in the well itself. So it's going to have multiple fail safes or backups in place. Also, it's going to have a ways that remote, uh, remote operated vehicles can actually go down and shut in the well, whatever be the case. You're going to have a lot of specific modifications for offshore applications. All right, so a couple quick notes about BOPs before we conclude. First off, being installation. So Installation wise, you're going to wait until you have your first string of casing into the well before you install your BOP. So your first set of casing has been cemented and set in place, then you're going to install your BOPs onto the casing head. So that's going to allow you to actually create and maintain a pressure vessel if needed. Now continuing on with that thought is that BOPs can actually fail and we've seen this happen in the past. And we saw this most prevalently with BP's Macondo Gulf of Mexico oil spill back in the, a couple years ago. So. We saw this in operational issues actually led to them taking a kick, but the BOPs failed to prevent the blowout. So they can fail and they must be again pressure tested and maintained. Also note that BOP stacks are going to differ based on operator and contractor preferences and also is going to differ based on the job at hand. So if you're drilling in a more of a high pressured area, you're going to need BOPs that have a higher pressure rating. So BOPs are going to have a specific rating to which they can take pressure wise. So you're going to have to very much respect that pressure and make sure that the stack that you have on location is going to serve your needs and protect you well if you get into a high pressure or well control situation. Also note that on a BOP stack you're going to have redundant valves and this is just going to again help make sure that you have adequate protection if you see a high pressure or well control situation. Alright and a quick fun fact, before a driller is going to actually actuate the BOPs he's going to make sure that he doesn't have any collars within the BOP stack itself. So he's going to make sure that he pulls up the work string until he sees the first collar at the surface of the rig floor. That's going to make sure that the valves can actuate and shut properly and seal around the body of the drill pipe or whatever is in the hole and not around a collar 
because it's not designed to seal around a collar. So thanks again for checking out this video. Be sure to check out the other two videos. I'll have them here on the screen where you can click them. Check out the other two videos on the basic fundamentals of, of BOPs and also the different types of BOP valves. So check these out and we'll see you in the next one.